Let's cut right to the chase. This is my new telescope mount. I'm gonna talk about my experience using it for the first time, the mistakes that I made along the way, and the final result of my first image using the ZWO AM5. So let me tell you a little bit about this mount compared to a traditional equatorial mount. The ZWO AM5 is a telescope mount that's quite different from others. A traditional equatorial mount like my Skywatcher EQ6R Pro can be significantly heavier and larger in size and they tend to utilize worm gears to move. The ZWO AM5 is a harmonic drive mount, also referred to as a strain wave mount. Harmonic drive mounts run on strain wave gears which can handle heavy payload capacities in a significantly smaller package. By comparison, the AM5's mount head alone weighs just 11 pounds, the same as just one of my EQ6R Pro's counterweights. Speaking of counterweights, traditional mounts require them to evenly balance the weight of a telescope for optimal tracking. Being a harmonic drive mount, the AM5 can handle payloads of up to 28 pounds without the use of counterweights, making it a perfect mount for smaller telescopes and compact astrophotography setups. Portability is the name of the game. Paired with the ZWO TC40 carbon fiber tripod, the AM5 weighs just 16 pounds and has a maximum payload capacity of 44 pounds. On the contrary, my EQ6R Pro weighs in at a whopping 76.5 pounds using both its counterweights and has the exact same maximum payload capacity of the AM5. Although the EQ6R Pro is an outstanding, highly reliable mount, it can be a challenge to transport it, much less carry it into your backyard without having to tear it down first. The ZWO AM5 can take significantly less time to set up due to its low weight and small size, especially when paired with a smaller telescope. Alright, it's looking like the sky is going to be clear enough for me to use this for the first time, so let's go outside and let's get this thing set up, and it should be really quick too. I am very appreciative of how much the technology has changed when it comes to astrophotography. And I will admit that I didn't start this hobby with setting up a laptop and setting up software on a laptop like Nina to be able to track and to control this rig here. I started when the likes of mini PCs like the ASI Air Plus were released. And this has just made the experience so much easier as far as setting up, tearing down, the technicalities of it can still be a little challenging, but just having this portability to come out here and set up so quickly is something that I'm very appreciative of. So we're gonna get started and we're going to polar align the AM5 and we're gonna go for a target tonight that I've been trying to shoot for a while now. It's called the North American Nebula. And there are some clouds in the way right now of where that target usually is located at this time of the year. Hopefully it clears out by that time. If not, then we can go for another target. All right, so using the ASI Air app, I'm going to connect to the mini PC that's mounted on top of my telescope. This is going to allow me to control everything from the mount down to the camera and other components like the electronic autofocuser and the guide camera. So it is connecting and we're gonna enter here and we're gonna go ahead and get started with polar alignment. At this point, I'm having problems because the mount isn't moving and the guiding camera isn't displaying anything. The AM5 is also beeping repeatedly during this time and I wasn't aware that that indicates a power issue and the guiding camera was also being affected by this power issue as well. I ended up learning that in order for me to use this mount the way I have it all connected, I need a larger power supply because that ASI Air Mini PC that's mounted on top of my telescope is connected directly to the AM5 which is supposed to power it and the AC adapter from my power source to the AM5 is supposed to power everything overall. It's not going to work with a standard 12 volt 5 amp AC adapter so I'm going to have to purchase a larger power supply and while I wait on that to come in I'm getting by for the time being using one AC adapter for the ASI Air only and a second one to power the AM5. Alright, we are just done with our first oxygen exposure for the night and it looks good. The stars are nice and round, guiding has been beautiful, 
and everything seems to be working out great so i am very happy with the start of this imaging session this is actually first light with the am5 the past few days have been more than anything testing for the power issues i was experiencing but now with this oxygen exposure i can begin getting the exposures that i need for the oxygen emission line and once this is put together along with sulfur exposures it's gonna look pretty good so it's just a matter of time at this point we ran into a little bit of a problem overnight as you can see here once we start approaching what is called the meridian flip we start seeing this we start seeing some trailing so this can be attributed to either a cable snag or Another issue I've been having using this mount with my setup is that the electronic filter wheel or the guiding camera will rub up against the tripod or the knobs on the mount head. After this, it just completely went to waste. Look at that. Once the meridian flip occurred, it seemed to have wanted to go back to normal, but now we have blurry, useless sub-exposures. All right, so this is what happened. As you can see, this cable has been damaged. It ended up getting caught somewhere at some point during the session overnight. So obviously this cable is gonna have to be replaced. I ended up having to remove the off-axis guider, which was previously located there, and it's been replaced with a guider scope, and the guiding camera is now located there and I've had some good results. They have been just as acceptable as I would have gotten with the OAG, which was previously there. And I've also relocated the ASI Air, which was mounted here to here on the side of the mount saddle. I've also had to flip my electronic filter wheel upside down because it was also making contact with the tripod or the base of the mount, which is not a good thing. But overall, I've been happy with this configuration and I've not had any problems since. I've finally gathered enough data to process a final image of NGC 7000, also known as the North American Nebula, so here it is.